This is the Lolo Pass Visitor Center. They have a small museum here. And this is where Lewis and Clark crossed to get to Washington, Oregon. They have coffee. There's a short film here. <laughs> and there's postcards and gift shop. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Wandering Wanda. I'm Marielle. It is about 2.30 Pacific time. We are here in, I'm going to butcher the name of this, Kamhia Clearwater River KOA. We're in Idaho. We're up in the Rockies. And would I stay at this park again? The answer is no. Definitely not. Even though we do have 50 amps, water in, water out, the sight is disgusting. There is garbage. I've already picked up garbage. I've been picking up garbage since we got here. There's garbage all over the RV site. Garbage, garbage, garbage. Cigarette butts. What well, looks like a Pringles lid, another Pringles lid. There's pieces of plastic everywhere that I think are tire hazards, in my opinion, that I've got to go pick up before I repark the truck. And of course, we have this third world country. I don't know what this is, some death trap hole in front of ours. Look, more trash, more trash, more trash. The other side also, trash. Now, in regards to how that other RV looks, I don't really care. It could be gorgeous inside. But what I do care about is all the litter that's on the ground here. There's rubber seals, the metal seal over there, another something that looks like a Franklin lid. It's absolutely disgusting. This, this park has no pride of ownership, no pride at all, as far as cleanliness goes. They don't really care. So, that's my first impressions of this park. And would I stay here again? The answer would definitely be no. Do not stay here. The place is a dump. As long as you don't mind the litter, or living in litter, and I don't live in litter. Don't stay here. Find another, there's other parks in the area. I don't know what they are, but I don't know what Fantasy RV Tours is thinking about putting us in litter. I don't live this way at home. I don't live this way, period. And they expect us to st spend three nights here. Really upset about it really pissed off about it. Alright, more examples of litter in this place. It's just fucking incredible. Well, this is cute. They got... They have a pad. And they have fans. That didn't come with the site. This didn't come with the site? The fans didn't come with the site. Oh. Yeah, that looks lovely. Looks like white crab. Dog poop. Oh shit, dog, dog poop. Oh my god. It has a... Big bear feel. Yeah. Who's in front of us? Hello. Who's in front of us? No, I don't. 
No. Nope. Okay. No. Stay away. Not into dogs. Okay. We are at High Country Inn. It was quite a trek to get here. Hopefully the food is good. Well, the setting is lovely. Looks lovely inside. Yes. Hello. Hello. I'm doing well. Is this your first time? Uh, oh yeah, future? it is. Wonderful. Yes. Well, my parents used to live in Nampa, but I haven't been to this part of Idaho, so... Alright. Excuse me, Helen. Thank you. How are you doing? Did I not ask, huh? The RV our, our, our site's filthy. It's absolutely filthy. Well, you should have seen Rick and I trying to get in. There are cigarette butts everywhere. On the other side of the dam and looks like there's a fishery down there also nice a better view if they cut some of these trees down My dog. this is vicky she can explain what kind of poop was next door dog shit <laughs> it was it was so bad it was so bad i mean so we we were in uh, 10, they were, but they now were in 19. So in 10, in 10 we had 50 amp, we had sewer, and we had water, and we had dog shit. In 19, we have 30 amp, no sewer, but water, but at least we have shade and no dog shit. So. It was awful. You walk out the door. It was not. It was just like the pound. It was like it being was at the pound. It was like being in the pound. Did you, did you see it? I feel it. It's disgusting. I mean, but, this but, is Harold. But, <laughs> but when the owner of the park says, says, yeah, I talked to him yesterday. Really? That's not been there from yesterday. It's been there for months. It's there for, yes, it was crust, it was petrified. Yeah. No, I did not. The sides are Okay, everyone's toasting. The, the guy from the UK just doesn't know how to toast properly. <laughs> <laughs> These foreigners. No, he's actually the only one toasting properly. We're the ones who are wrong. 38 sites in four states. So the majority of the park is here in Idaho, but we also have some in Washington, Oregon, and Montana because we encompass all of the Nez Perce homeland. Um, and if you're curious, we were part of legislation going back to make the National Historic Park, uh, going back to about 1964, 65, and it was ratified <coughs> by Lyndon B. Johnson. Um, this particular site uh, was part of a state initiative prior to its time being uh, added as one of the sites to Nez Perce National Historic Park.
right, we are having lunch here at River's Edge in the town where we were supposed to be RVing in. Orofino or something like that. Oh, this is even better. You must be over 21 years old. Ah, love it. No children. Oh, look. Look how pretty the water. I don't even know what river this is. <laughs> oh, even better. Service dogs only allowed on the deck. Yeah. Okay, today is Saturday. 11 a.m. Closed on Sundays. They're closed tomorrow. Ooh, nice. Hello. Hello. Good. You're the only restaurant with ratings of over eight. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's, that's nice. It's, it's, that's because we're the only restaurant. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. You can still have bad ratings. You can still have bad ratings that's if you're the only restaurant. That's so, so true. But, so you may sit in this cool bar or in the dining room or out oh, on the deck. Not out Your on choice. the deck. Where do you want to sit? Not in the deck. No, you're, not and you're deck. free to walk around. No one's here yet. Oh, so okay. Peru. Peru. It's a little Where would you like us to sit? Where would you like us to sit? Anywhere. We don't have zones, so I will be your server. Oh, okay. So and cheers. you are? Kim. 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 Hello, Kim. Hi. Oh, this is work. lovely. Oh, I love this. No, no, anywhere is perfect. <laughs> Oh, this, one, this one's good. Which one? Well, you, that you one? You want to be on the river? Want to be on the river? But I don't know. That's... He doesn't usually like walls. I don't like walls. He doesn't like exterior walls. Oh, okay. Uh, this one's good. Yeah, it's okay. This one's good. All right. We can see the river from we here. We can see it from here. Okay, so you're happy here. Thank you. I will get you your menus. And We're happy with good food, actually. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> this is <laughs> the best place to come. He was a storyteller and taught me many of the stories and the traditions of our people. Now our people are very childlike in their ways. It shows in our music and in our stories how our people are influenced by their surroundings and how we approach everything in a very childlike manner. <coughs> I, I just came up over the hill so my ears have to put off. Can everybody hear me okay? Yeah. Yes. Okay. I hate to ask that. I asked that one time and the guy way in the back said, I can't, but go ahead. No sense all of us having to suffer. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, traditionally, <laughs> stories were never told in the spring and summer months. The only time you tell stories is in the winter months or when you're traveling. Because in the spring and summer months, you had to gather foods and prepare them for the long winter months ahead. So it was said that only bad little children has to be told stories in the summertime. But since everybody here has been traveling, we're legal and I can tell some of these stories. Now, any time the people would gather, to tell stories or to exchange information. Because he didn't want to taste bad with this monster. 
<laughs> when he was finished, he came out and he gathered his things, and Coyote came back to this valley. Now Coyote could see the monster sleeping down in the valley, so he took out his rope and tied one end around his waist, and he tied the other end around the mountain. And Coyote hollered at this monster, Let's what say, you can't devour me, my power is too strong. The monster woke up and he looked around, but he didn't see anyone. All he heard was that voice. Let's rinse it. You can't devour me. My power is too strong. The monster opened his mouth and drew in a breath. The coyote just went to the end of his rope and stopped. The coyote starts singing songs, teasing this monster, trying to keep him angry. He'd sing, Kuts kutsuni, uneye, uneye. Kuts kutsuni, uneye, uneye. Oh, that monster got angry. He emptied out his lungs and he drew in a huge breath. This time, Coyote cut his rope, and he went flying into the monster's stomach. It was really dark in there. Coyote couldn't see anything, so he took out his ball of pitch, and he built a fire. <laughs> <laughs> and the fat melted from the monster's heart, and it dripped into the fire and kept it going. The monster gripped his chest. Oh, that coyote! Oh, heartburn was so bad. <laughs> Forward, nothing but bone. Some of the animals were sick and others were scared. So Coyote told these animals, you gather up these bones and we put them in front of all of the holes in the monster. Because when he takes his last breath, he'll open up and you kick those bones out and follow right behind. Go quickly because there won't be much time. Coyote, <coughs> he gathered all of his knives, laid them out, and the animals, they gathered up all the bones and they put them in front of all of the holes in the monster. Coyote took a knife and he began to cut on the heart of the monster. The monster rolled around in agony, hollering, Coyote, come out! The coyote wouldn't listen, he just kept cutting away. Coyote slipped and broke his knife, so he picked up another knife and he kept cutting on the monster's heart. And the monster began to beg Coyote to come out. He'd say, Coyote, Coyote, come out! Come out my ear! Coyote said, no, I'm not going to come out your ear. Because then all the animal people make fun of me. They'll say, oh, that was old man coyote, a ball of earwax. <laughs> but again, coyote slipped and broke his knife. So he picked up another knife and he kept cutting away. And the monster kept begging coyote to come out. He said, coyote, coyote, come out. Come out my nose. Coyote said, no, I'm not going to come out your nose. Because then all the animal people will say, oh, there goes old man coyote, a ball of snot. <laughs> Again, Coyote slipped and broke his knife. So he picked up another knife and he kept cutting away. Oh, the monster, he was getting desperate. He said, Coyote, Coyote, come out. Come out the back. <laughs> coyote said, no, I'm staying right here. Finally, Coyote was down to his last knife. There's only one piece of flesh holding the heart in place. He turned and told the animals, get ready, this monster's going to die. When he takes his last breath and he opens up, you kick those bones up and follow right behind him. Coyote reached up and he started to cut, then he slipped and he broke his knife. So he grabbed the heart and he pulled as hard as he could. Finally, the heart broke free, and the monster took one last huge breath and opened up. The animals kicked the bones out and followed right behind him. Now, Raccoon, he wasn't sure which way to go. So finally, he decided to run up towards the back. Raccoon <laughs> fast as he could, but just as his body cleared, the monster began to close up, and his tail got stuck. He had to pull a few times to get his tail free. Raccoon, he was so relieved to be free of the monster, he thought he was going to be stuck there for good. And he reached up and he wiped the sweat from his brow. That's why to this day, Raccoon has those rings around his tail. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, yeah. Now Muskrat, he wasn't sure which way to go. Finally he decided to follow Raccoon. After all, he was much smaller. He thought he was a lot quicker. Muskrat ran as fast as he could, but just as his body cleared, the monster closed up tight. And Muskrat pulled and pulled and pulled, but he couldn't get his tail free. So he called for Coyote. It's a yeah, yeah, it's a yeah, yeah, help, I'm stuck. Coyote looked around the body of this huge monster, but he didn't see anyone. Minahewis, where are you? 
I'm underneath the monster's tail. <laughs> so Coyote walked around to the back of the monster. Sure enough, there's Muskrat. Coyote grabbed Muskrat's paws and he started to come. Knox, Le Pierre, me talk, he pulled as hard as he could. When Coyote did this, it pulled all the fur off Muskrat's tail. And Coyote scolded Muskrat. He said, I told you to hurry up. I told you to have much time, but you just dawdled along. From now on, all of your descendants will be reminded of how pokey you are. That's why to this day, Muskrat has no fur on his tail. <laughs> <laughs> Many of the animals, they said, oh, let that monster's body lie there and rock. Searching rock for coming up onto the land and causing all this trouble. But Coyote had a use for this monster. Coyote told Crane, go down to the river, get some water. Coyote cut off the monster's legs and he threw them way over to the east. So from that place, the long-legged people will be from. That's where the tall black foots are from. Coyote cut off the monster's head. He threw that over to the east. From that, they have a food tradition among the nest birds. Now, when a man gave me my first flute, he said, this flute, it's going to take you wherever it wants you to go. And I looked at him like, you're off your meds, huh? <laughs> This little stick is going to take me somewhere. Oh my. 
Page 44. Now we're on page 44. 44? 42 is two nights. Two nights. Got it. Hell's Candy, Clarkson. But if you go to 44, it's one night in Boardman, and that's what he's telling you now. Yeah. So that's going to be, again, there should be 50 and 30 at each power pole. Um, and some, pipe, some, pipe, some sites are going to be pull throughs and so we're going to be back here. I'm sorry, what? Uh, as, as far as I know, yes. Cascade Locks. Okay, that's 630 through 73. Alright, so we're, we're back, to, uh, back to an allocation problem in Cascade Locks. We have 1050 and 1430. Cascade. So we move on to uh, Cascade Lock we'll is some other page? Yeah. 47? Page 47. Okay, could you okay. start at the top of that one, please? So what about right. what's the Clarkson? No, no, just no, start at Cascade. Cascade Lock. Cascade Lock. Page 47, it's for 6.30 to 7.3. And so here's what's there. So we have 10.50 to 14.30. What they give us? Hmm. They're full of levels. 10.50s. Um, 
then page 49, we're there from 7-4 to 7-7, page 3 nine. All right, so now we're going to talk about the last stop. Which is I don't have that. In, instead of in Warrington, it's in Seaside. Normally in the past, Rivers West has stopped at Campers West in Warrington. The problem we have there is Campers West called the office in March and said, nope, can't come in. Well, so the, uh, and that's all three caravans people go into Campers West. Um, so the office and for a bus have worked since actually before the beginning of the caravan to try to figure out what to do in Seaside. The office could only come up with sites, and again, this is because of July 4th, at a certain creek. So they tried something like 50 miles around the Warrington area to find some place to take 40, 24 breaks. The only place they found was Circle Creek, and okay. it's dry camp. Oh, of course. Not, I, Right? It's not all bad news. It's not all bad news. So let me continue on. Um, obviously, the four of us made the office painfully aware that this was really not a good thing. We all need to call the 24th, 24th. It won't make any difference. There are no campgrounds for July 4th. There aren't any. Yeah. Yeah. I, the office already knows that there is nobody happy. They already know that. Well, they're really going to know. Trust me, there have been phone calls going on for more than 40 days. Yeah. They are fully aware. So let me tell you what's happening. Um, so what's happening is Fantasy is bringing a generator into the campground. Unfortunately, it's not going to supply power for everybody. You can't do that. They can't bring that, you know, a, a generator for 24 rigs in the But they're going to bring a generator in that's going to put out 450 amp lines. I'm going to get two 50 to 30 splitters that have two amp lines and 430 amp lines. Uh, Fantasy is also going to give everybody who's not on the generator, a $100 pilot fuel card to pay for the extra fuel you're going to use to run your generator. <laughs> Fantasy has never done this before. They have never, ever brought a generator into a campground. So, I mean, you know, it, the office is doing its best. It's, it's about all they can do. Uh, they got their campground to agree that they could bring a generator in, and so we'll have a generator that will help them run you know, 250 amp lines and 430s. And someplace down the road, we'll figure out who needs who needs what. Will they, what set, will they set that up before we get there? It's supposed to be set up before we get there. Before we get there, before we get there, it's supposed to be set up. That's that's what they tell me. I will find that out. We'll, we'll find that out before we get there because there will be a lot of phone calls going in to say, uh, is it really there? 